Hey guys, Halfway Dead here. So yesterday I was streaming on Twitch trying out the new Heat Seeker mode and I was asked if I could make a video on the physics. At first I thought, well it's probably not really worth it if the mode is only gonna stay online for 4 days. But then I also thought it's pretty easy to explain so why not just make a very short video about it. So when it comes down to it, there are really just two differences compared to normal Rocket League. Those are how fast the ball moves after you touch it and how it curves. For the topic of velocity, it really does not matter how you hit the ball at all. You can get the weakest touch possible in normal Rocket League and it will still go into the net with the same speed. As soon as you've touched it, it will go to pretty much the set speed that the ball has at the moment. And that speed is dependent on how many touches there have been on this rally. The curves also work with a pretty simple idea. So the way the ball curves is by putting a force on the ball that points towards the center of the net that it's currently targeting. Let's look at some examples that show what that means in a couple of situations. First up, this hit close to the net. We can see here that the ball is traveling exactly perpendicular to the net, but the force acts towards the net. So the force actually acts exactly perpendicular to where the ball is traveling. And you've probably learned from physics in school that this is called a centripetal force. When the force acts exactly perpendicular to the direction we're currently traveling in, then the result is that the ball will be traveling in a circle. In this example it does, and that is because at any point in this circle, the force towards the net is perpendicular to the direction that the ball is traveling in. But now we're gonna look at an example where that is not true at all. In this example, the ball is once again hit exactly to the side, but now it's targeting the opposite net, which means that net is way further away. The force, again, points towards the center of the targeted net, and at first this means it's perfectly perpendicular to the direction the ball is traveling in. But that doesn't stay this way this time, because once it's curved a bit, the force will no longer be perpendicular to the direction the ball is traveling in, and that is why the curve kinda dies out and isn't as strong anymore. But then again, as we get closer to the net, the force starts to become more perpendicular and that is why close to the net the ball starts to curve more again. So even when we're applying a constant force, it doesn't mean that the curve is going to be constantly the same. That strong curve towards the end is definitely gonna fool a lot of goalkeepers trying to keep the ball out. That is all I have right now. I don't have any hard math on how strong that force is or how fast the ball exactly moves after every touch. As I already said, I don't think it's worth it to put too much effort in such a short temporary mode and that's why I didn't. Anyway, make sure to subscribe. I'm gonna have another video out this weekend and follow me on Twitter or join my Discord and I'll see you soon for the next video.